Today's episode of the podcast, it's another episode um, that's just going to give you guys some context around the breathwork shed mm. uh, because it is a massive part of our conversation, at least when we're having coffee. Yeah. And I think just because we're so fascinated with how the breath, something as seemingly as innocuous as the breath, can cultivate so much self-awareness and bring you to speed and shed some light on so many things that you were perhaps unconscious about. And... You know, one of the reasons why Siobhan got so much from breath work is because, you know, truth be told, she had a lot of pain um, that perhaps hadn't been brought to light, um, you know, to a to a, as great a degree as what the breath did for you, you mm. know. And um, we just thought it would be really important to give you guys some context around that. You know, the first couple of episodes are here um, of the Coffee Chats podcast are all about, you know, getting to know us. Um, so that, you know, we can build rapport with you guys and then perhaps you might want to take on, um, some of the things we say as a little bit more valuable and then, you know, hopefully you can let us know who you are and, um, comment and share and all that sort of stuff. And then we can help growing it. We can help grow it, um, in the way that you like. But, um, anyway, in terms of that, I will let you take the microphone. I yeah. Suppose. Um, so in the last, um, podcast I talked about the anxiety and the depression and as yeah. much as I fucking hate dwelling and playing the, the victim card I just thought it was so important to get these three stories out about how breathwork helped me and then I'm done because I always say this to my breathwork clients like you work on the shit that comes up with breathwork and you change your story and you don't dwell on it so I find it really important to get these like done and never talk about it again. <laughs> I think th- what's important to know there though is like there is a difference between talking about your story and using it in an empowering way to shed some light on your experience and maybe help other people that are currently moving through a similar narrative as opposed to literally ruminating, dwelling on it, you know, provoking people to sympathize. You know, there is a difference between a victim mentality, why me, this will always be me, as opposed to this happened in my life. And look how far I've come. Look how excited I am to be me. And I'm definitely wanting to share it because I'd love to reach out to people that are either going through something similar or have been through something similar. And um, hopefully breathwork can help them or me talking about it can help them too. So, yeah, it's definitely a story that... Um, I want to share, but I obviously fucking hate talking about it. <laughs> but you know what? It's what? so fitting that we're talking about it today. Why? Given I what know. just happened. I know. I know. Can we say that on the show? No, nah, not yet. Oh, we can't say it. Not yet. Oh, okay. They probably think you're fucking pregnant or something. No way. <laughs> no way. We have a dog. <laughs> we, we have a dog. We have a dog. No, but something really cool happened. Yeah, it did. Okay. <laughs> hey, but by the time this comes out. Oh, true. We'll say it. I got my visa. Siobhan's <laughs> officially, we're officially partner visa. And I actually got my partner visa, so it's amazing. So it's really fitting for this podcast. Exactly. Because uh, I've been waiting for like 10 years yeah. and I've already applied for this before with other partners and this rolls really well into this podcast. It really does. Yeah. It really How does. Funny. Yeah. I know. Good point. Yeah. Kick it off, honey. Um, so yeah, another um, kind of reason why breathwork helped me was because in previous relationships, and not just one, but many, it was something that I kept attracting was partners that were um, betraying me or cheated on me or were just doing stuff behind my back that obviously I thought I kind of let it go, thought it was okay or didn't know about it. Um, and when I discovered breathwork and the realizations that came up were about how like it wasn't acceptable and how I was just letting things pass and how I thought it was like a normal part of society that that guys just do that so I'd kind of just leave it then move on to the next thing and I would never learn my lessons when I was moving through relationships and that's like not blaming anyone or anything but it was just mainly my fault as well for not having enough love for myself to realize what they were doing was not acceptable for me so I would kind of lower my standards of self-love let them do what they were doing which was breaking my heart and yeah just accepting that it was okay I guess Mm -hmm. yeah which led on to um I actually went through like hypnosis to try and repair it because I was getting triggered really easily so in this relationship if Tom did something that was similar to past relationships I would kind of lose it, not lose it in a like mental way, but I would kind of go inside and be like, what's going on? Why am I feeling this way? Um, And then, yeah, went through hypnosis and she explained to me that it was trauma, um, which I would never thought betrayal would lead to me having trauma. And when you think of trauma, I used to think of it as 
like PTSD, which are all forms of trauma, and um, huge accidents and um, big things that would happen in your life, like deaths or yeah, just any sort of accidents. Um, being going through surgery, and I would never ever think that um betrayal would be a form of trauma. So if that's something you're going through, just to let you know, it is trauma, and to study it, and it's definitely something that affects the the way the brain and the mind works. Yeah. Yeah, trauma is a is a major discussion point. Uh, at least in this relationship, yeah, we talk huge. about it all the time, and I think yeah. you know there's a really big spillover uh, when it comes to trauma and how you manage your relationships. Because when two people come together and are going to be spending all this time together, because obviously we very much hope that you love each other, um, your egos are going to clash, your senses of identity are going to clash. Because as Siobhan said, trauma is subjective, and you're going to be viewing the world yourself and your partner through a different lens you know you're going to be seeing the world in a different way based on the experiences that you've had and when we talk about trauma being subjective you know trauma is there are objective cases you know that we can all recognize as being traumatic victims of rape war veterans you know um, clear psychological abuse violence all that sort of stuff we know that um, that's going to probably going to have a traumatic effect, you know, a distressing um, effect for the months and years to come. But whatever has kind of changed your perception of self or world um, to a negative degree may have probably did emanate from a specifically tough experience. Mm, well, I always say like, um, so triggers are like something that makes you feel um, maybe even like anxious or scared or afraid or annoyed or agitated and when you get those feelings it's definitely something that you need to like dive into and look into and obviously Tom kept triggering me mm. and I had no idea why because I was like but our relationship's so good and I obviously was like madly like I'm madly mm. in love with you good to, know. good to know I was wondering like what was going on and why was I feeling this way because you were actually not like really doing anything wrong but in my head I was like but this is what the other guys did and they were betraying me and um, so it's definitely something when you feel like that to like really look into it so I got recommended to go to like a hypnosis and this was way before breath work um and did that and she really went into like my subconscious and see what was going on there and it literally went back to when I was like probably oh my very first relationship I was in when I was like oh maybe like 14 or something like to that like back then it was a serious relationship of course <laughs> and yeah and he um he actually cheated on me with like my best friend and and I was like oh yeah whatever like we're in high school this is normal and I just left it but in my subconscious when I was getting hypnotized at the age of like 31 it was like that inner child was like no that really hurt my feelings I'm gonna put a guard up in your brain to make sure that anything else happens like that again you're not gonna get hurt and I'm gonna protect you so any guy since then that would hurt me or do something similar I'm like oh but he did that I would just like freak out my brain would be on like automatic like what the fuck is going on mode yeah um, and it would really try and protect me but i had no idea what was um going on with it yeah yeah and it's i, th I always think of it as a beautiful example of the way we've evolved you know for the for the brain to see similar uh experiences and then associate that with something from the past to yeah. protect you as yeah. a way to keep you alive i think it's beautiful mm -hmm. but in this day and age when we are so far removed from you know, cause and effect and, and survivalist mentality. You have to know uh, when that is actually working for you or when it's actually working as a detriment to you. Yeah. And I mean, just just so you know, like I, Siobhan wasn't just reading the whole thing wrong. Like I had some serious baggage, you know, I had heaps of issues around my anxiety. I was white lying a lot because I had mm -hmm. a lot of fear and obviously lying and deception is a huge um thing you know in in betrayal and yeah. relationship deception and stuff so like i i was by no means fucking perfect in this i was triggering you yeah you know i was the one screwing this up yeah but we, like you know we, we both clearly had things that we had to work on yeah because we were clashing but a good example is like a white lie so to someone it's like oh whatever you just white lie like is something really small but to someone who was going through trauma which i was going through and obviously didn't know at the time I was like, but he lied. Yeah. And that means he's going to betray me because that's what all my previous relationships were like. They all lie. They literally continuously lied. And then when I'm in a solid relationship like mine and yours, what I consider solid. Um, Same. I was like, 
well, what, like, what the fuck are you white lying for? Like, you're mm. just exactly the same as them, and then I put you in that category. And then in your defense, you're like, what? But it was, like, so little. It was just, like, a little white lie. It doesn't mean anything. Mm. And then we had to, like, really work through that. And then because you understood what a white lie was to me, it's not. It's, like, something really big. We had to work through, like, something so small as a white lie can't be, like, done anymore to help with my trauma. Yeah, absolutely. And it was great for me as well because I I began to dive. When, you know, when Siobhan started talking about trauma and all these sort of stuff, I'd only ever seen mental health you know, based around anxiety and depression. I start, yeah. started to study trauma massively. It's one of the things I'm most fascinated with in the psychological landscape. And it helped me come to understand the reasons why I was white lying, all, all that need for external validation and all that mm-hmm. need to prove to myself constantly that I was okay and things like that. And it was, you know, you and I always look at life as how is this happening for us? Yeah, and that always. initial clash that, you know, almost led us to breaking up if we're not, if we're, you know, not going to beat around the bush. Yeah. Um, especially in Bali, you know, when, um, as we spoke about on the last episode, um, was the best thing that happened to us. And mm. now, now it's not just like we consider this relationship strong, we know this relationship strong mm. because we know everything about each other. Mm-hmm. And we, we know... Like, let's just say, for example, you lied or I lied. We know within an instant yeah. because we're so aware of how the other person reacts and behaves. Yeah. And I think that's so important, like, in a relationship, like, if someone's getting annoyed or triggered, it's like, well, di- like, dive into look into why are they getting annoyed and why are they getting triggered? Like, do you really know everything about their past and is there any way that you can help them? It's like, if someone's constantly not doing something or doing something and mm. either triggers you, it's like, really dive into it and figure out why because... If I didn't dive into like why am I being why am I so fucking annoyed all the time like so annoyed that to the point you were white line that I'm like fuck I'm done like next this keeps happening to me but if I didn't dive into that and um, through like the hypnosis and then the breath work I would have never known like we would just, we wouldn't be together no. because it's just like relationships take work and you need to understand why your partner like why they are the way they are. Yeah, and I remember a um, moment when we were driving to Werribee. I think we just started our Sunday relationship yeah, days, you know. Yeah. And I was really interested, um, and I went about it in the worst possible way, but I was really interested in your background because this is the first uh, mature adult relationship I've ever been in, and yeah. we're coming on three years now, so <laughs> done well. Work, thank you, thank you. Yeah, but I was really interested in the experiences you'd had before, and I kept probing you on your previous relationship you know, and that was a really tough one for you. And, um, you know, I kept probing and probing and then you just burst into tears. Mm. And I, I couldn't, you know, that was just an incredible moment, I think, for the both of us because I realised that I don't know my girlfriend anywhere near as much as I should and I'm also not communicating to her in a way that is beneficial for the both of us. Yeah. And you also realised that there is something in there that, that needs to be brought out yeah like i needed to like yeah do something about it definitely as as i was diving more into like the mental health world i was like yeah this is not right if i'm like still crying and discussing something that happened so long ago yeah i know and then obviously doing the breath work i can now like chat about it and fucking be thankful for it (laughs) i know that's an incredible place that you can come to after being cheated on betrayed deceived like when you're foundation is rocked to that yeah. degree and then you can come to a place now where you're really happy that that happened yeah it's like maybe so talk happy. people through that like how does that happen um well i feel like so when i did the breath work it was um definitely loads coming up about like self-love and i know that's another fucking phrase that gets thrown about but whatever it was true um yeah i just didn't love myself enough to respect myself to have the boundaries to be like what you're doing is totally unacceptable for me like I expect higher because if you like I was obviously in a position where I didn't love myself because I was letting people betray me just like yeah that's okay and then kind of just roll with it and just Mm -hmm. keep going um so I clearly just had no self-love and when that was coming up with breath work it's like no you need to love yourself not accept like other people's shit or the way you're treating you and that goes for everyone in any relationship like family, friends, like if someone's bringing in that negative energy all the time or they're not encouraging you, not supporting you, they're not bringing in that like, you know, helping you move forward to be a better human. Like Mm -hmm. it's just not acceptable. And if you love yourself so much, which every single person should be working towards that or should be doing that, um, yeah, you're just going to accept shit. Like um, that's what I was doing. And it really came up in breath work to the point um, 
but when I did the course, I was like, I just cried. I was so sad that I let these people treat me this way because I didn't love myself enough to demand better, demand more. And then obviously in our relationship, when I went through all that, I was like, I demand more. Yeah. <laughs> I expect to be treated this way. <laughs> and you're like, damn it. I know. And then was like, brilliant, and we came up with a saying, it was like, no more bullying money. <laughs> <laughs> I know we did. We did. This is so because true. I did. Like Tom would be like, "We're doing this," or I'm doing that. I'm like, "Yeah, okay, yeah, okay," just to make you happy. I know. And then as soon as I got back from breathwork, like my course, I was like, "No, I don't want to do that." And he'd be like, "What?" I'm like, "No, I don't want to." Or we'd have a discussion. I was like, "I don't agree." Yeah. Whereas before, I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. like whatever." I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I literally just was like, no, don't agree with this, don't agree with whatever. Yeah. I like really stood up. Like, I think t- the whole self love thing is like setting boundaries, like standing up for what you believe in, and if that's like a true passion, and doing what you fucking want. Like, seriously, um, yeah, if you've grown up being like, obviously people have been like, oh, you need to do things this way or that way. And if you start doing things that you truly like love and the way you want to do them it really helps but mm. yeah definitely like from your end well I'll let you talk but you were kind of like jesus yeah <laughs> who well, am i with <laughs> it, was, it was really good because i think i did have a um narcissistic element to me you know where yeah. i just had this like i feel so right about things that i can't possibly be wrong yeah and then you know i was like shimon you'd started you know saying different things disagreeing here and there and it was kind of like I was defensive initially because I couldn't gauge you, yeah. you know, and then not, I mean, and I, I would stand by the idea that you and I have never, um, genuinely tried to hurt the other person. No. We've, we've both just tried to figure each other out the whole time. Yeah. It's always been a discussion, which it's, is good. Yes. It's always been a discussion for sure. For sure. And, um, and that, that's the thing about relationships is that, especially in the first couple of years, you're going to have to argue. And, yeah. and you're going to have, because you, you're two different people, see the, see the whole world differently. And what, you're just going to chuck each other in a room together and expect to live happily ever after. Yeah. Like, either you do that and resentment builds. And then next thing you know, someone has just like ruined your whole life with mm-hmm. cheating or like gone and fucking killed someone or done something crazy, mm-hmm. you know. So resentment builds. Or you argue and you tr- not argue in ways of like, I'm right, no, I'm right. I mean, obviously that can come about, but it's kind of like, a, well, we need to figure out where we stand. Mm. You know, we're trying to figure out a way that we can both compromise so that we're both happy living together. And then, you know, then we can live in that honeymoon state that is also now attached to a lot of meaning because we've put so much time and effort into making sure that the other person is cool with living with your fucked up self yeah and that's why i obviously realize now studying the trauma and the mental health and going through the breath work about like the people in my past relationships i can literally like feel sorry for them and have compassion for them because they clearly didn't love themselves enough that they went about it in a way of getting validation from like heaps of other girls Mm. and needing other girls to tell them they were good to the point that I'm like, well, why didn't they just like say, this is what I need from you or can you do this or give me this more? And it could have been like a discussion, but instead they took the easy way Mm. of finding other girls to the point of saying like they didn't have girlfriends or doing it behind people's back. And then, yeah, like it's just, it should always be a discussion between someone to the point before you get to the stage of hurting someone else. Like Absolutely, absolutely. And I think if you can come, come from that angle, it's like, hey, and it could be something as innocuous as, you know, l- all right, let's try to find an example of something that, that we do that is dumb, that we um, we discuss. You're so, okay, I've got an example. Oh, yeah, well, today, like, you're like, right, I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah. And it's like, okay, he'll probably... And now I'm like, I give you leeway. I'm like, he'll be like <laughs> half an hour. Yes. And he's literally like an hour. He's like... I'll be two minutes. Yeah, Two exactly. minutes is half an hour. I'm like, mate. Yeah. And then I just say to her, I'm like, get that in check and be better. It's true. <laughs> Where, whereas before, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, get it, learn. <laughs> and be the better. thing is, like, if you don't discuss it and quarrel about it and then figure it out, you're going to move the needle slightly towards resentment. Mm, and yeah. the further that goes, the more things you just let slide. Like, you and I almost enjoy when the other person brings something up that we don't do well because there's yeah. a chance for us to improve it's true. and make the relationship but like if I stop doing that you're gonna I'm gonna move the needle slight, slightly further towards you loving me even more than you already do mm. and that's 
all I could ever want. I want to just keep moving that until we bloody die. Yeah. You know, but another example is Siobhan has an issue with, well, used to have an issue with the way I would do the dishes. And the thing is, and the thing is, that's fair (laughs) enough because I don't do the dishes that well. You know, I have an issue with the fact that you never put your bloody shoes back on the the shoe shoe rack. (laughs) Yeah, but if we don't discuss it, resentment will build just that little bit. And it see, it might sound so stupid, but it's not because if once someone in the relationship does something like so tiny that annoys you, imagine every time they're doing that and then they do something else and something else. Like it's fucking ridiculous if you just don't say, hey, this is annoying me and then like change it and move on. Yeah. See, that's a really good, that's a, like a really good point, I believe, because if you don't bring it up and you let it slide and you let it slide and you let it slide, then anger will come out when they do something that you actually don't care and then you'll be giving them mixed signals. Like, so, everything annoys me now. Yeah, it's like, oh, I hate it when you just do your hair like that. Yeah. When in actual fact, that anger is built up because you didn't put the shoe rack back in where it should go. Or, yeah. for example, it's got nothing to do with the hair. But then you'll start thinking, oh, I shouldn't do my hair like this. You know, I'm thinking of a bizarre example. Yeah. But <laughs> the most important thing, that the best foundation that you can build a relationship on is honesty. Mm. And all those little projections skew that honesty in any way they do yeah definitely but i just think um with me sharing it for people that have like been betrayed um or maybe going through it right now or think there's like signs and stuff going through it like i would 100 percent open up a conversation about it and um, like definitely keep communicating with your partner to wonder what's going on like ask yourself how much do i love myself to accept what my partner is doing do i really love myself that much to be able like would you let your partner treat your best friend like that mm-hmm. like that's something you should really ask yourself and obviously when i look back like there's no fucking way i would um yeah definitely ask yourself that and like dive into stuff like seeing a counselor doing meditation doing breath work like doing self-love stuff to see if it will really help that and like have boundaries and if you don't look at where your boundaries are with people like fucking set them it's so important in relationships with anyone and life um, and obviously a, an amazing person that um we follow and i always rave about is the holistic psychologist on instagram she literally gave me permission to set boundaries with people in my life and it's the best thing that i ever ever did with people um yeah especially in relationships it's like yeah just seeing seeing where you're at with that i think that's like a huge piece of like it was a fucking gold nugget I got through Instagram, through her page. Mm. And I think it's something that everyone should definitely follow and look into. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think a really good point there is um, if you are, if you feel like you are being cheated on or being betrayed or something isn't right there in the realm of honesty, irrespective of how much self-love you have, if you have a complete lack of self-love and that to you is normal don't let it go on Mm. bring it up if that person a b and c whatever happens work on the self-love component first you know to get to a place where that isn't the norm that isn't acceptable and and that will never be acceptable again as opposed to just letting it continue because then that is on you If, if you know something is happening and you're not dealing with it you know and and the whole thing is like oh you may not know how to deal with it brilliant speak to someone who does you know do something about it because we are all worth a heck of a lot more i mean we're we're all human beings you know we all we all should get the best chance we possibly can to have a good life yeah and you and i set boundaries for each other you know there are things that i do that isn't acceptable there are things that you do that aren't acceptable yeah and our you know our relationship is a constant mediation between that and then when we live within the lines within our own boundaries it's an exceptional relationship yeah I, love I agree it. and like another thing is people might be like oh but I've been betrayed and or I just found out and they've been doing it for like years like I've obviously been in that position too and then that's something to really learn and take into your next relationship like one thing to know is like the person that cheated on you is definitely not in a good place like they're fucking shit for doing it and they're really hurting inside too yes. because something's going on with them and two it's like like take that mind your next relationships you don't attract the same person which I kept attracting the same person until I really looked inside myself and be like right how can I bring up my self-love my boundaries 
um, make myself better so I don't keep attracting that. And I really worked on myself. Like, you have to do the work on yourself to attract better. And if you're just going to be like, oh, well, I'm the best and I'm perfect and I shouldn't be cheated on. Like, no, you got to work on yourself too to bring up the self-love. Um, yeah, and I guess if you don't know what that is, like, look into it, like, 100%. Because, you know, there's there's a whole different array of betrayal out there. Like, there's not just one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. So I hope if I can I just say if you guys like get anything from this podcast or like there was a golden nugget or you want to ask questions, just like leave us a comment. Um let us know like what you heard that you loved or that you didn't love and yeah, we'd love to respond to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed your coffee. Yeah. Thank Stay you. Stay stimulated. Listening. Should we do that? Hope you enjoyed your coffee. Stay stimulated. Stay stimulated. I love it. <laughs>